Organ donation is a process when a person allows an organ of their own to be removed and transplanted to another person with legal consent from the donor or a person's closest living blood relative. To think about organ donation through the basic economic principles of supply and demand, donors supply their organs to satisfy the demand of recipients undergoing transplant procedures. When the supply and demand are balanced, the entire system is in equilibrium. But let's say that the supply of organs is not enough to, to meet the demands of recipients. What happens then? To be fair and equal to everyone, a waiting list is used for recipients to wait their turn while an organ becomes available. The problem is that only organs that meet rigid donation criteria can be given to the recipient, and recipients often pass away while waiting for a transplant. In fact, 17 people die each day waiting for an organ transplant. While some commonly donated organs include the kidney, heart, and pancreas, this video will focus on lung donation. Since 2010, 18,594 lung transplantation surgeries have been performed in North America. There are even more people waiting for an organ to become available. And Dr. Steve Singh, a renowned cardiothoracic surgeon, shares his thoughts on the lung donor crisis. When people give us the gift of an organ, there's a whole team that comes into place to prepare that organ or the body for all the organs that will be procured by multiple teams and transplanted in multiple recipients. So in any particular donor, you have parts, two lungs, two kidneys, livers, cornea, um, pancreas, um, many organs that are procured. And it is quite a production to maintain a deceased donor for the time that the organs were procured. So there are one of the most practical reasons why there's a donor shortage is not all the organs are ready at the time that they're needed. Uh, some mechanisms of injury, such as lung contusions uh, or patients that have very wet lungs for various reasons, um, may need more time for the lungs to actually function so physiologically, they're ready to be taken from the donor and transplanted at that time into a recipient. Ex vivo lung perfusion is a therapy applied to donors' lungs outside of the body before transplantation that improves organ quality and makes lungs, lungs that were previously unsuitable safe for transplant. A pair of lungs is kept treated outside the body. This gives surgeons the opportunity to evaluate the lungs and see if they're ready for transplant. Currently, EVLP is being used to evaluate the quality of lungs at transplant centers in North America and Europe. This technology works by restoring the circulation and ventilation of ex vivo lungs. At 37 degrees Celsius, oxygen consumption in the body is stimulated in order to maintain the function of the lungs and nutrients are infused into the lungs, which optimizes their performance. Before considering EVLP, potential lung recipients go through intensive screening to determine whether or not they are a fit candidate for a transplant. A pair of lungs is also subject to intensive screening to determine if the organs are viable. After the initial screening takes place, transplant teams will decide if the lungs are healthy enough for immediate transplant. If they are not, they will be considered for an EVLP. This takes us to the question of how does this work? Well, prior to surgery, using EVLP allows pulmonary cells and tissues to remain metabolically active and viable for several hours. This period of time prolongs lung preservation, assessment, and reconditioning of lungs that were not previously optimal. This innovative method mimics the environment of the lungs as they would be inside the, hu the human body. The lungs are placed inside a clear plastic dome and attached to both a ventilator and filtration system where they are maintained at a constant temperature and treated with a solution that contains nutrients and oxygen. This system ensures that lungs are cleared of any bacteria and stability is maintained. After being flushed out and ventilated, the lungs will go through re-evaluation where they are examined for blood vessel pressure, tissue elasticity, and oxygen capacity. The re-evaluation process allows surgeons to adjust their surgical plans as needed. The benefits of using EVLP are fantastic as it opens the opportunity for more people to obtain donor lungs off the transplant list. With one of the limitations to the number of lungs available being the potential risk of primary graft dysfunction, the use of EVLP can expand the donor pool through reconditioning marginal grafts before transplant. Now let's see what Dr. Singh has to say about his thoughts on EVLP. 
So ex vivo lung transplantation has been shown in the literature to provide excellent early, midterm, and long-term results. Uh, in fact, studies have shown that uh, out as much as five years after transplantation, survival after lungs that were improved with ex vivo are equivalent to lungs that were transplanted in a traditional fashion. In theory and in reality, um, the ex vivo setup allows you to take lungs and treat them for as long as you'd like to uh, and target the mechanism that makes them not viable. If those are reversible processes, uh, ex vivo clearly in theory will allow you to recover those lungs. If it's not a reversible process, well, then there's no therapy that would reverse that. So in essence, ex vivo is a therapy that has been shown to have long-term results and in theory should allow us to use all organs that are available and only discard ones that truly are not usable, therefore getting the greatest impact to recipients and society that we can accrue. To wrap up, EVLP may be a promising procedure to help solve the lung donor crisis in the long term by making more lungs available to those on the donor list. Thanks for watching.